I want us to go to Jonah chapter number four. We've been in Jonah for a long period of time. And uh, this will probably be our last week in the book of Jonah. But you, you know, you kind of know God is doing something on your behalf when you can see the when you can see your warfare increase. Sometimes the, the increase in warfare is an announcement that you are in a different place. And sometimes we can interpret the increase of warfare as a negative, but sometimes it is an indication on what's already been announced in the heavens. And so, um, let's look unto Jesus in uh, Jonah chapter number four. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Um, this change of plans greatly upset Jonah. We've been here for, since the beginning of August. Um, and you can rewatch these on our Facebook Live and all that good stuff. So, hopefully last week you did your homework. Um, on what, what causes your triggers like Jonah. What are your habits? What are your patterns of behavior after you've had things trigger you? Um, and if you hadn't done it, um, you can do it with us. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah. He was mad because God wasn't going to condemn Nineveh. And uh, he became very angry, so he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would change your mind? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. Remember Jonah, whenever he gets into conflict, he starts to run. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people, which is very true. God is not interested in wiping out people. He wants them to turn to repentance. And he says, just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. He's offended because he proclaimed that God was going to destroy these people and God didn't do what he proclaimed. And he felt that his ego and reputation was on the line. And then Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see what would happen to the city. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plan. But God also arranged for a worm. Somebody say worm. Say like you got some life, say worm. The next morning at dawn, the worm the worm, the worm, ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away. And the sun grew hot. God's, God arranged for a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and he wished to die. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted even angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you feel sorry about a plant. Though you did not, you did nothing to put it up there. It came quickly. That was a miracle. God showed a miracle how the plant could grow quickly and then it died quickly, which is God showing how quick grace is and how quick judgment is. They're all fast. Okay, so you can embrace one aspect of it because it's fast and miss the other aspect because it is not what you are looking for. And but Nineveh has more than 120,000 people. Some believe that was just the men, not including the women and children, living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Now, I could preach on just verse number... Um, 11 where God says but Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness and I could preach this whole message not to mention all the animals 
that God is just as, if God is concerned about mentioning animals, how much is he concerned about us? Y'all missed that whole thing. So I want to talk to you for 20 minutes of time entitled, When the Worm Eats Your Witness. When the worm eats your witness. There was a tree that was placed there and it was symbolic of God's grace to Jonah. And because Jonah wasn't appreciative of what God was giving to him, he sent a worm to eat the witness. Because when we don't appreciate what God is doing, a worm will come and depreciate what we just should have appreciated. And so we find in this particular text that God is trying to change Jonah's heart, which is a reflection of a lot of times our heart, that he's trying to change our heart, showing them that grace and judgment at the same time, that I can raise something up and then I can condemn it at the same time. I'm trying to show you that it's better for me to lean on grace than it is for me to lean on judgment. And Jonah is really missing the point because Jonah is supposed to be called to the story of Nineveh. And the thing that Jonah misses is that Jonah forgets that he's supposed to be a hero to a story, but he's turning out to be the villain. It, many of us can do that a lot of times, that God sends us to a story to be a hero. And because of our own prejudices, we turn a story that we were sent to help, we turn and then hurt the story. Have God ever invited you into a situation and you realize you really didn't make it better, you made it worse? Because sometimes we can go into a situation with all good intentions to help. But because ourselves are so mixed in the scenario, we turn help into hurt. Okay, so, 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 okay. You know, um, Jonah is um, a reflection of many of us. Everything you will ever be, you already are. I mean, I want to say what? Everything you will, everything you will ever be, you already are. See, you you may have not met who you supposed to be, but everything you will ever be, you already are. You may have not discovered it, you may have not found it, you may have not run into it, but everything you will ever be, you already are. Because when God called you, he already called the who you are based on what he saw and put in you. And a lot of us are missing it because we don't realize everything you will ever be, you already are. This is why God calls you. Because he already knows everything you'll ever be, you already are. Ooh, some of you are fighting the person you're supposed to be because you're in love with who you are. And you're afraid to fall in love with a person that's better than you, but you're not trusting that the person of the future is better than the person of the present. So you're staying in the present as an excuse not to advance to the future. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. And so here it is. Everything you already be. So here's what God was showing him was that mercy, God was giving him mercy. Mercy is an important aspect. Mercy is different than grace. Mercy is different than grace. And classes and session is the series. And a lot of times we're praying that God would give us grace when really we should be praying God give us mercy. But mercy is an interesting thing because a lot, in a lot of times when you read scripture, it doesn't say the mercy of God. It talks about the mercies of God, okay? Because the mercies of God is interesting because God uses the word mercy is, is, the, word, is the word womb. 
it's interesting that God will use the term mercy as the term womb, which simply means that God gives mercy from the womb. What does that mean? It is a picture. Hebrew has a lot of pictorial words. It is a picture of a mother who has a baby in her womb and she loves her womb even though she hasn't felt her womb materialize in her hand. And it is the idea that when God is about to make a decision that would be detrimental to us, he feels mercy through his womb because he's so interconnected to us that a lot of times his delay is not that he has forgotten about what we deserve. It is because he's so connected to us, he knows how much it will hurt us if he moved into judgment. And instead of moving into judgment, he moves into grace. And a lot of times a mercy is God withholding what we deserve. He was about to give it to you and I, but he withheld it because he felt it in his womb. He felt that if I release what I'm about to release, it will do so much damage to them. And the word that he uses for mercy is a word that deals with the womb. It is an amazing emotion or compassion derived from a motherly organ in the human body. This is the strongest connection of compassion and love are bonded between a mother and a baby through the womb. It is the only connection a mother has is through her womb and mercy is just like that. It is the connection God has to us. It is this bond that God has to want the best for us, to want the best of us. And oftentimes he will pause judgment so that he can give us grace. The only bad thing about it is that you could get confused and think God is authenticating or endorsing your disobedience or your delay. But the only reality is, is he's stopping himself from moving into the direction that he doesn't want to. So notice this. There is a difference between showing mercy and giving mercy. Showing mercy indicates an emotion. Showing mercy indicates an emotion. Giving mercy indicates a choice of action. Showing mercy indicates an emotion. Giving mercy indicates a choice of action. You ever fed somebody because you saw them on the street and you took what you had and you gave to them? You were moved with an act of mercy. It's the criminal who deserves 15 years and, and the judge hears his statement and he's moved to emotion. But then he has a choice. I could either give this man what he rightfully deserves or I can give him mercy on the court. Mercy from God, Jonah, should push you and I to give grace to others. More mercy to you should force you to give grace to others. Okay, so you cannot be a recipient and then not be a respondent. You, you cannot be a recipient and then not be a respondent. I am a recipient of mercy. And because I am a recipient of mercy, I am a respondent of grace. And grace is interesting because grace is that goodwill on God's part, which not only provides and applies salvation, but blesses, cheers and assist believers grace is I didn't study but God graced me to pass this I, I, I didn't I, I, <laughs> I didn't feel my taxes right but, but God's grace stepped in and assisted me I didn't know how to do the business right 
but God's grace stepped in and assisted me. I didn't have all the money that I need, but God's grace assisted me. I didn't know what to do with myself, but God's grace assisted me. I looked at myself and said, I don't deserve it, but God's grace assisted me. It is a cheering on. It is not just God giving you what you don't know. It is not just God adding to you. It is God cheering you on when you don't have any cheerleaders for yourself. How are you making it all by the grace? Grace of God and the grace of God is not just God it is God cheering us on and and how did you make it through how did you make it when you didn't know how you were gonna make it I made it by the grace of God I don't know how I did it I don't know who did oh I do know who did it I did it by the grace of God there was angels cheering me on God knew I was have you ever been so down and God sent something to cheer you up it is not just an accident it is the grace of God God wanted to remind you I will be with you. It's the grace. It's the grace. It's the grace of God. It is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. It is the grace. It is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. How are you doing what you're doing? It is not my abilities. It is not my intellect. It is nothing but the grace of God. You can fight. You can dislike. You can hate. You can be big mad. You ain't mad at me. You mad at the grace of God. The grace of God will find those who don't deserve it. Give them what they don't deserve so they can be billboards of God's goodness. Did you hear about that young man? It ain't nothing but the grace of God. Did you hear how, oh, he got a connection now, baby. Ain't got no connection he got the grace of God it ain't nothing he did it ain't nobody he knows it is but the grace of God the people that I thought I could count on I couldn't count on I realized it was nothing but the grace you can't you can't figure it out you can't go to school for it you can't learn about it it is just what God gives and you freely receive it is the grace of God it is the grace it is the grace of God. Woo! It is the grace of God. Man, don't try to explain the grace. You're going to frustrate yourself. Don't, don't even try to waste your time. To explain. It is the grace of God. I don't know how it happened. Don't get mad at me. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. I wake up every morning wondering, God, you still love me enough to give me another chance? It is nothing but the grace of God. I didn't pray last night. I didn't read my Bible. But God, I got a promotion on my job. It ain't nothing but the grace of God. It is nothing grace of God. Here it is. A worm. So here's the thing. Jonah, you don't want to minister to Nineveh. This is important. Jonah, you don't want to minister to Nineveh because you got to be careful. Don't let other people's weakness blind you of your wickedness. Don't, don't let other people's weakness blind you and I of our wickedness. Because Jonah, you, you mad at them because they're weak. But I realize you wicked because you won't go and serve them because you're letting their weakness blind you to yourself. And that's what, that's, that's what judgmental does. It allows us to block out everybody else and present ourselves in a light of righteousness that we don't possess. So now here it is. A worm ate the tree overnight. Grace is extraordinary and judgment is extraordinary. When God gets to the place of judgment, it is extremely extraordinary. When God begins to judge a people a place it is extraordinary it is extraordinary and it, and after a while grace does run out so God is simply saying hey listen don't run don't run on grace don't shout on grace because grace is an illusion 
it's like your gas light being on and you think you can get an extra five miles out of it and you realize that last time it gave you 10 this time it didn't that grace can run out on you and the worst thing about it is grace can run out on you on the wrong season of life when you're on full eight okay god does extreme things for correction He's trying to correct Jonah, so he does extreme things for correction. And, and maybe there's no conclusion to Jonah's story to let us know that correction is an ongoing process. But here's the thing. But sometimes only God will know the conclusion. Ooh, let me say that one more time. You, you don't read any fancy ending to Jonah's story. You don't read that God used them in power fell. It says he does extreme things for correction. I'm trying to correct Jonah, but he doesn't want to listen. I'm trying to correct you and I, but you want to listen. Maybe there's no conclusion because correction is an ongoing process. And sometimes only God will know the conclusion. You know, when you get to a certain place in life, you've got to be determined that only God knows my heart. Uh, you you got to know only God knows what's in this thing nobody else and it is a conclusion that only God knows it don't matter what they try to say it don't matter what they try to present only God knows and correction is an ongoing process and sometimes only God knows but here we go here we go sometimes God is not done with you but only you and God will know the conclusion that's why when we stand before God, it's only us who can stand before God. No one can stand with, before God in our place. Okay, <laughs> this is a good one. Jonah has is, is got some bells going off that, that he is, he is he, something is wrong internally that, that is obviously showing externally. And, and you know when, when spiritually you're off, <laughs> you know, sometimes people say, um, 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 uh, my, my season is up or whatever the case is and, and then you'll sit there and say well it's amazing that God can tell you your season is up but you can't hear him any other time in your life you miss God in every aspect of your life maybe your season is up because you want to wear these clothes in a season that's expired and you don't want to change and conform into what the new season requires. Okay, so Jonah, here's the thing. This, this is good. This is good. Many people will panic to find a charger before their phone dies, but won't panic to find a spiritual charge before their soul dies. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. Uh, ma many, many people will panic to find a charger before their phone dies but won't panic to find a spiritual charge before their soul dies. Jonah, you are in trouble. Your soul is in trouble. It's one thing when God, see the first thing is God sent the tree to speak to Jonah. When Jonah didn't observe God was speaking to him through the tree, God sent the worm. And when he didn't recognize the worm was speaking to him, God sent the wind. And when he didn't recognize the wind was speaking to him, God began to speak. It's a bad place when God has to talk to you because he's giving you warning after after warning after warning after warning and it takes a lot of time for us to comprehend God was using other elements to give us the grace that we didn't understand so here we go Jonah represents concern over a beloved plant but what does it really mean The plan is here today, gone the next, and you're more concerned about a plant than you are your assignment. His concern was dictated by self-interest, not by genuine love. He didn't love the plant. It just fit his story. You gotta be careful, there are people who don't love you, you just fit their story. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. There are people who don't love you. You just fit their story. And it could look like love, but it really isn't love because underneath the surface, as long as you don't fit my story, I no longer need you. Now, here it is. Here's what happens. Here it is. Your attachment could be deep, but you got to realize 
You're a, okay, <laughs> this is so good. Jo Jonah, you're attached to a plant that's seasonal. But the things you should be attached to eternally, you miss. Isn't it amazing that some of us love things that are killing us? It, it, is, it is the most mind-boggling. Jonah, you, you have a devotion to a plant, but you're not a gardener. You have devotion to a plant, but you're not a gardener. If you feel as bad as you do, what would you expect a real gardener to do when tending a plant and watching it grow only to see it wither and die? If you really were concerned about the plant, you would be just as hurt that the plant died. You were only in love with a plant as long as it was giving you shade. So you really only love the plant because it was giving you shade. But when it died, you really didn't care about it. You gotta be careful. Okay, let me, let me phrase it in a way that you can understand. How many people love you because you give them shade? I, I, I'm not talking about how many people love you. How many people love you because you give them shade? Because a lot of times when you stop doing what they love, they stop loving you. That's how you know what real love is. Because even if I can't shade you, I still love you. I don't love you because you shade me. I love you because of who you are. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't get your performance, don't let your performance make you think that they're really applauding. They really may be just applauding your shade, but they don't want you, they just want your shade. You got to be careful because, um, 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 um. Some people make their relevancy off of feeding your dysfunction. All right, let me let me go because I want to get to my points. So I got a minute and forty six seconds. Don't let the worm eat your miracle because God gave it to you but what you don't value God will send a worm to eat don't don't dishonor what God gave you because what you dishonor God will send a worm to eat God sent a worm to eat the bark of the tree God <laughs> God help me God will send a worm to eat your harvest and you're wondering what happened to your harvest. God sent a worm because he couldn't get your worship. Whenever you see things start eating up in your life, just, just know maybe God sent a worm because he can't get your worship. Maybe, maybe you're so busy. I understand you, you got that type of schedule where you can only fit God in once a month. Don't let a worm eat your worship. Don't, don't let the God, don't let the canker worm, the locust, the pomegranate, the, all those things eat up, your, your, eat up your shade, eat up what God raised up for you as a miracle, as a sign that I am with you. But because you didn't realize I was with you, I'm going to send a worm worm to eat it up and I'm gonna watch you let you watch the worm eat up what you work for let you no 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 wait 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 you can't get mad at God for sending a worm to eat up the work because you didn't work for the tree God gave you the tree so he determines the rules of what he does with the tree and if I can't get your worship you get a worm if I can't get your worship you get a worm and a lot of us are wondering what happened to our stuff it ain't the devil that ate it it's a worm it's a worm it's a worm now here it is here, here it is I'm gonna let you go with this we're gonna go home Blessed be the tides that bind our hearts together. Jonah, don't let your character contaminate your calling. Your character is the filter to your calling. A dirty filter will still let air through, but it'll blow dirty. <laughs> I love to say it one more time. He says, don't let your character contaminate your calling. 
Your character is the filter to your calling. A dirty filter will let the air through, but it will still blow dirty. And don't confuse blowing air as clean air because clean air won't make you cough. Some of you got symptoms and the symptoms are because you got air blowing, you think it's grace, but it's really dirty air. It's not cooling air. You know the difference in Florida when you got hot air blowing? It's blowing, but you still feel hot. You still feel agitated. You still feel annoyed because the reality just because it's blowing doesn't mean it's the favor of God. Just because it's blowing doesn't mean it's good. Your hair could be growing, but that don't mean it's healthy. Jonah, I want to let you know, just because you're alive, it doesn't mean I'm for you. I really may be against you, and I'm giving you mercy to get it together. Here it is. Don't let the worm eat your worship. And don't let the worm steal your story. Don't let the worm. Listen, ooh, let me tell you. Here it is. Here it is. This is prophetic. Here it is. Because I see this happen. I see it happen. All right, y'all ready? This is the prophetic word. You ready? Here we go. Bring it down. I want them to hear this. So I wrote this. So last week we talked about, you know, God building these homes and then it, everybody I know just started going crazy. I, I mean, they just went, everybody I know just went slap crazy. I mean, just slap crazy. I posted something that had nothing to do with nobody. It was congratulating somebody else. Somebody that knew the person I was congratulating that had an issue with that person. Text me to the 38th degree upset because I was congratulating his enemy. People just getting all types of sensitivities. But here, here's, here's what God told me. He said, be careful. Satan is sowing seeds of discord. Don't bite the seed because you will be poisoned. Be careful. Satan is sowing seeds of discord. Don't bite the seed. You will be poisoned. The hardest thing, the hardest thing is that when people don't understand your grace, they try to sow seeds to get you to bite because they know the seeds have poison in them and you don't have to digest all of it. You just got to digest some of it. crazy stuff. People call me. Hey man, I know, I know your mentor is this person. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah. Let me tell you what I don't like about him. Why are, you, why are you calling me though? Like, out of all people to call, you, you should call somebody who don't like him. But here's the thing. You bite the seed. See, Satan want you to turn up. Because when you turn up, you lose the harvest that God gave you. See, he can't get you off your post. He only wants to trick you off your post. Remember this. I was about to say something I shouldn't say. My wife told me not to say those things. See, what made me go viral. Don't let others' actions resurrect who once died. No, 
Don't let others' actions resurrect where once died. Because remember, if you eat the poison, you die. The worm comes in many forms. Smiles in your face. Don't eat the seed. Because you're going to die. And you know what's bad about eating the poison? You don't know it's killing you. You walking around dying. You don't even know. Because you ate the seed. Ah! Unforgiveness is eating the seed. It's like poison. Wishing they die, but you die. Listen, people gonna break your heart. Don't eat the seed. People gonna take advantage of you. Don't eat the seed. People gonna say things about you. Don't eat the seed. People gonna lie about you indirectly because they can't say it to your face, so they're gonna have indirect social media you. Don't eat the seed. Just keep moving because the grace that God has given you, you can't come down to eat the seed. It takes too much work to go all the way down there and eat that seed that you're planting. I got as much as I would love to go straight, 305 Pine Hills, call everybody I know about you. I ain't going to eat the seed. I ain't going to give you the joy to eat the seed because when you eat the seed and you die, it's a slow and painful death and there ain't no way in the world I'm going to give my enemy that much pleasure to watch me die. Every day I'm going to make sure you watch me live because that's what the grace of God is. It is an enabler. It makes people wonder how in the world are they doing what they do. It ain't nothing but the grace of God. Don't eat the seed, Jonah! Close. So here's what your heart should be. Sometimes you have to love those Ninevites who don't know they need what they need. I close with this. This is what happened to Jonah. Jonah is a great passage for leadership. It's an amazing passage. Jonah is what my pastor always says to me. He says, listen. He says, Reverend Dr. Enoch, he says this. He says, you work tomorrow? You do? Okay. Anyway. Um, he says this. He says, if you, if you get around people, your heart will be broken but it'll stay warm. If you separate yourself from people, your heart will never be broken, but it'll grow cold. Don't eat the poison. Some of you are cold. You ate that poison. You know why you ain't happy? You ate that poison. There's a lot of people spreading poison. Don't let your family make you eat the poison. Because sometimes your family are poison dealers. Oh, don't, don't let them make, don't, because your family know how to push the right buttons. They know how to say the right things. Don't eat the poison. I, I'm not going to let you kill me. No. No. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm going to let you have it. You got it. You got, you got it don't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. It just means that that old man, I don't want him to live again. He a hard guy to put back down. He just, when he get alive, when she get alive, she, it's too much. It's, it's she, he, he too much. I, I don't put him down a lot. I, I don't, I don't even want to think about him coming up. I just, I just, I just, I don't even want to imagine what he could do if he, if he heard what you just said to me. I don't, I don't even, listen. 
Don't eat the poison. Jonah, don't eat the poison. Jonah, your heart has been poisoned so bad that you don't even love what God loves. It just happens that quick. How does a man go told he got to go speak to somebody and then now he's angry at the same people he's called to speak to? Can I, can I bring it home? Can I, let's bring it home. Let's, let's, let's get the Volkswagen pick you up. Let's pull up in front of your driveway. How you hate what God blessed you with? How you hate your kids now? How you hate your brother and sister who you used to play dolls with? This happens that quick. How you hate your mother that quick? And the crazy thing about Jonah, like many people, is he thought he was doing something right. He thought their death was God's will. How many people do we see in our society that think the same way? In the name of God. Out of time, bow your heads. Father, thank you for what you said. So out of time. Help us to not let the worm eat our witness.